Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the 2022 edition of UNIDIR's Outer Space Security Conference. We'll try uh, to stick to tradition with uh, this conference, and it is our hope, of course, that it can once again serve as a forum where the space security community can come together and where we can jointly consider the many challenges relating to outer space security, but also, and this might be the harder part, to exchange ideas uh, regarding solutions. The Outer Space Security Conference is a, a key event of our newly established space uh, security program. Now, to be clear, uh, UNIDIA has been pursuing space security research for decades, of course. I think it's an established player in the field. But earlier this year, in January 22, uh, we really felt uh, the time is ripe to pursue research uh, in this area on a different scale, to do it by way of a self-standing, newly established uh, program. And so here we go. We have an ambitious uh, research portfolio of projects for, for this uh, new program uh, uh, lined up. Uh, we, of course, hope that in years to come, we'll be able to scale it up uh, further. And we certainly see uh, the timeliness and the urgency uh, of more research being done in this field. So through the creation of this space security program, we are aiming, of course, to facilitate informed policymaking, to foster collaborative governance, to foster common understandings first and foremost, and also where possible to provide thought leadership in a rapidly evolving domain. Above all, of course, we want to contribute to ensuring that space is kept a peaceful and a secure domain. And in this regard, I think the activities that we have planned uh, and the objectives of ensuring a peaceful and secure space domain are more important, but also more urgent uh, than ever, given the current geopolitical context. We're witnessing rapid technological change. We're also seeing new technologies now increasingly be applied in the real world and at scale. And we're seeing growing access to space technologies. But all of this against the backdrop of escalating geostrategic tension at levels unseen since the end of the Cold War. And I think it's undeniable that all of these factors create a situation of heightened strategic unpredictability, and that's a situation that we simply cannot ignore, including at this conference. Now, to address these challenges, we're absolutely delighted at UNIDIR to welcome a very diverse group of diplomats, government representatives, uh, experts uh, from military backgrounds, experts uh, from industry, civil society, and also academia, and of course, from all over the world. Joining us here today in person in the room, uh, but also virtually, I should say that this is the second time that we're running this conference as a hybrid uh, event. Uh, we did it for the first time last year, and we came close to 1,000 participants last year. Hopefully, we'll reach similar figures this year again. But I think it shows the timeliness, uh, the importance, and the urgency of the topics that are being discussed here. In the years, a space security conference is one of our three annual flagship events at the Institute, together with the Cyber Stability Conference and the Innovations Dialogue. And as a flagship event, it seeks to build common understanding, and in this case, as a basis for security and sustainability in space, and to successfully prevent conflict. In this sense, our hope for this, uh, the impact that this conference can have, is that it has a positive impact in terms of contributing ideas and momentum to international dialogue around space security. And of course, with a view to developing and adopting concrete measures uh, to ensure the long-term sustainability of human space activities and the security of the space domain as a whole. In that regard, and to that end, we're very proud to have assembled once again, I think, an impressive uh, lineup of speakers uh, throughout today and uh, tomorrow. They will be covering a wide range of different topics and from different viewpoints, of course. Now, like all of UNIDIR's event, this is a very interactive uh, format. So I would like to encourage all of you here in the room, but also everyone joining us online, uh, please uh, come forward, please participate actively. Uh, we're looking forward to receiving your questions. This event, this format is, at the end of the day, all about dialogue. 
Now, as a voluntarily funded organization, uh, I should say that this conference, like all of UNIDIR's activities, would not be possible was it not for the support of our generous donors. In the case of the Outer Space uh, Conference, I have to extend our sincere thanks to the governments of the United Kingdom, the Russian Federation, the People's Republic of China, and the United States of America, as well as the Fondation pour la Recherche Stratégique, uh, with the financial support of the European Union and the Secure World Foundation. Now, I very much uh, look forward to uh, a lot of interaction throughout the day. I look forward to hopefully uh, productive and constructive discussions today and tomorrow. Um, before I now introduce our keynote speaker who will really kick off the substantive part of uh, the uh, conference, let me just extend an invitation to all of you here in person in Geneva. We will have a reception tonight at the Pregnigate, uh, the Vieux Bois uh, restaurant. Uh, it starts at six o'clock. The idea, of course, is to continue on a more informal level the dialogues that we have throughout the day. Um, and I very much look forward to seeing many of you there. It's one of these kind of events where the more the merrier. Uh, I think is really, really true. So now we're very honored and delighted to have Izumi Nakamitsu as our keynote speaker for this conference. Uh, she will kick us off. Uh, she is, of course, the Under Secretary General and the UN High Representative for Disarmament Affairs. That's a position she has held since 2017. And uh, she has had a long and distinguished, successful career in the United Nations, as many of you, as you, many of you know, and has held many important positions therein. She couldn't be with us due to conflicting commitments here in person today. Um, so we have Izumi Nakamitsu on video and if you could now please show that video. <coughs> Thank you all very much and I look forward to productive discussion throughout the day. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to provide a message to the UNIDIR Outer Space Security Conference. The theme of this session is quite appropriate given the current state of deliberations and negotiations within the United Nations. Building common understanding is often the first step towards the development of durable mechanisms to ensure security. I believe that the work that has been initiated this year in Geneva through the Open-Ended Working Group has successfully taken those initial steps. Given the state of the world, from climate change to the war against Ukraine, progress to reduce and eliminate strategic risks have never been more urgent. As Secretary General Guterres has warned, developments in technology are enabling new weapon technologies with dangerous applications they have the potential to open a new battlefield or to start a new arms race. While no armed conflict has been waged in or from outer space, warring trends leading us towards that outcome continue to accelerate. Security policies and doctrines that foresee and plan for conflict in space have been a cause for alarm. We have already witnessed the deployment of ground-based systems with dedicated anti-satellite missions, including missiles as well as disruptive means. Some states have accused others of already deploying in orbit what they consider to be space objects with anti-satellite functions. We see more examples of interactions involving military spacecraft with satellites owned and operated by others. In particular, uncoordinated and non-consensual close approaches can be a source of insecurity and tension. The lack of restraints on such activities could be in itself a driver for states to seek to develop counter space capabilities. Many actors are testing and demonstrating various dual-use capabilities that could bring tremendous benefits if used in an appropriate manner. Many of these same capabilities can, however, exacerbate risks and tensions 
If they are deployed in an environment without clear and internationally agreed rules and principles. Given the nature of the space environments and its uses, security risks and threats have impacts far beyond the owner of an affected satellite of the country of registration. Luckily, we already have many tools for promoting understanding when it comes to building common security in outer space. A primary purpose of transparency and confidence building measures is to increase understanding. The 2013 report of the group of governmental experts remains highly relevant and more action is required to promote its implementation. In particular, facilitating exchanges of informational national space security doctrines and policies on major military outer space expenditure a low-hanging fruit that could provide significant benefits. The establishment of an online repository for such information is one practical and local step I urge states to consider. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the report of the UN Secretary General pursuant to Resolution 75-36 and the current open-ended working group have provided a platform for states to share their threat perceptions. These exchanges in themselves help reduce misunderstanding and misperception. Unilateral commitments, such as not to conduct destructive direct ascent anti-satellite missile tests, add tremendous value as they are clear, independently verifiable, and can reduce misunderstanding. Other types of political commitments, such as those related to the known first placement of weapons uh, out of space, also add value by signaling the intent of states on the behaviours they regard as harmful. So far, I have referred only to the role of states. Private actors, industry, academia and civil society can also contribute directly to promoting common understanding and security in outer space. One concrete example is the technical and operations and standards development by the Consortium for Execution of Rendezvous and Servicing Operations. In his report entitled Our Common Agenda, the Secretary General observed that, and I quote, Developments in outer space are posing new risks to security, safety, and sustainability, increasing congestion and competition in outer space could impair our access and use by succeeding generations. Our governance and regulatory regimes require updating in line with this new era to preserve outer space as a global common. End of quote. This is why the Secretary General intends to convene a multi-stakeholder dialogue on outer space as part of the Summit of the Future in 2024. The purpose of this dialogue is not to replace the executive decision-making roles that states must play in shaping the future of international governance. It is rather an opportunity to elevate international agreements to a higher political level and to instill a sense of urgency in existing work streams. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in concluding, I wish to emphasize that many of the most prominent and beneficial developments in the space domain are driven by actors in the private sector. Indeed, private actors now own and operate the majority of functional satellites. Satellite services are found everywhere in everyday life. They are also key to many sectors, such as agriculture, disaster monitoring, air travel, and humanitarian action. To be effective, the design and implementation of new norms, including those related to the non-weaponization 
and non-use of force in outer space require the support, active engagement, and participation of stakeholders at all levels. Conferences like this one play a vital role. I hope this spirit of inclusive and multi-stakeholder dialogue on outer space security will also be carried forward in our intergovernmental bodies. I thank you very much for your attention.